What's up guys and welcome back to another video. Today I'll be showing you how to make high quality breakbeats from scratch. Breakbeats have been a cornerstone in a lot of today's genres. From classic breakbeat to jungle and drum and bass to hip hop and to garage. Breakbeats used in modern music have typically been sampled from very old drum solos from jazz and R&B and they've been sped up and chopped up to create cool rhythms but it's possible to program your very own ones inside your DAW and use some effects to mimic the vintage feel of the old school recordings if that's what you're going for. We'll first be going over sound selection, then the programming itself, then processing, and then chopping up. These things will bring that breakbeat vibe to your track and make your break stand out from the rest. These are a few examples of the breaks I'll be making today. But let's dive into it. For the sound selection, all you really need is access to some sounds that have the vibe you're going for. Regardless of the pattern you program, the sounds you pick highly affect the breakbeat. You can go the route of the modern and clean breakbeat with digital sounding samples like this. Or you can go with an even more vintage and old school style breakbeat like this. These two breakbeats sound quite different, but it's the exact same pattern both times. The only difference is that sounds have been swapped out. If you're a total beginner with no sounds installed, you can find loads of great free packs on the internet. A lot of them have cool sounds that can get you started making your breaks. I've also considered selling my own sample packs at some point, so if that's something you're interested in, let me know in the comments down below. For some high energy tracks, you may want your drums with more release and more high end, like this. But if you're going for a more minimal track, you may want sounds with less high end. Again, these two patterns are the exact same. The position of the drums are identical. The only difference is the choice of sounds. If you play with a melody, you can get a feel for which one you prefer. In this case, I think the first loop sounds a bit better, it fits the vibe a bit more. The chord is a bit more filtered off, and I think the lo-fi sounds kind of complement that. But if I go in vital, and I turn up the cutoff, I can quickly make the other loop sound better. So it's not because one loop is better than the other, it's about which one fits the context of the rest of your track. Sound selection in and of itself is a tough skill to master as a producer, but the first step when creating your perfect breakbeat is identifying what kind of vibe am I going for? Do I have a specific style in mind? Do I want the break to be more modern or more retro? Do I want the break to be super energetic and aggressive or do I want it to be more laid back and chill? Once you've found the vibe for your track, search through sounds that match that kind of vision. So find out what you want for your track and then gather the sounds for the programming. Now the actual programming of your pattern heavily depends on the style you're going for. Three people watching this could be wanting to make three completely different breakbeats. One could want that more aggressive breakbeat like this one. Another person wants to make a breakbeat similar to Bicep's track Glue. And another person wants to make a jungle breakbeat. In each case, the sound selection, like we mentioned before, is different, but the whole rhythm, groove, and tempo is also different, and you may not know at all how to arrange your breakbeats. There are key similarities between all these breaks. Generally, in a breakbeat, the kick and snare make up the underlying groove, with the hats and percussion filling out the space and supplying things on top. If I play the kick and snare from the first breakbeat, they sound like this. Here you can notice how frequently the kick and snare play. The most common breakbeat pattern is called two-step, and I'll show you how that sounds. It's a snare playing on the two and four, and the kick playing on the first beat and on the off beat before the snare. For this specific breakbeat, I've messed around with some more kicks and some more snares in some different places. Everything else in the breakbeat sounds like this. 
has to play on every offbeat, give this rhythm. We have these two hats playing random rhythms like this. I've come up with these rhythms literally by experimenting, putting the hats in random places, pressing play, and seeing what sounds good. Then we have these two hats and this tom, which play this groove. I'll play the breakbeat now by adding each sound on individually. This way you can hear what effect they have on the breakbeat. This is an example of how you can take a simple two-step pattern and turn that into something advanced. If we move on to the bicep breakbeat, you can see it's also a two-step pattern. I've not mentioned it, but the tempo definitely also changes the vibe of the breakbeat. The last one was at 114 BPM, and this one's at 130. You can definitely feel this one's just faster. If I play the kick and snares, they sound like this. If I mute this snare right here, it's just a two-step pattern. So yeah, Bicep added this snare in here just to add some groove. If you want, you can do that too in your own breaks. Just like before, we have a hat on every eighth note. We have these three hats playing a rhythm here. Here, it's the shuffle and the swing that's giving the rhythm. You can see here, here, and here that I've shifted the sounds off the grid, and it gives a really cool groove. The kick, snare, and hats all sound like this. The break sounds really cool already, but to fill it out even more, there's some shakers and some tambourines. It both adds a groove, but it also fills out the space and makes it less empty. The last thing here is a little reverse hat, which sounds like this. This was just something I noticed Bicep had done in glue. So the full thing sounds like this. As you can hear on all of these breaks, the hats and percussion are really what makes them sound like breakbeats. Even though it's the kick and snare that decide the underlying groove, they sound way too empty without anything going on underneath. The hats and percussion are often overlooked, but it's really what makes the break come to life. Now we'll move over to the jungle breakbeat. The one I played you before is this loop, but exported and chopped up even more. I'll show you how that works afterwards though. The original loop I made sounds like this. As I mentioned before, the tempo really also changes the loop. If I change this to 130 like the bicep loop, it sounds like this. Suddenly way different. But the kick and snare groove in this pattern isn't just the regular two-step. Like on two-step, the kick plays on the first and the snare on the second beat. But instead of playing on the fourth beat, the snare move over to where the kick played before. If I just play the main kick and snare, it sounds like this. For jungle, this rhythm sounds really cool. On these two offbeats, I've added a filtered kick, which makes the groove sound like this. I completely forgot, but there's another snare layer under here. The first one just sounds like this, but the second sounds like this. The two sound like this. We have these three different hats playing this rhythm. The fast hats here also really add energy to the breakbeat. They fill out the spaces and they make the groove. Next we got these two percussion sounds here. Also really fast playing in between the spaces just like the hi-hats. Hats and the percussion together sound like this.
Lastly, I added this ride pattern. Not only does it add some rhythm, but the noise from the ride fills out the whole breakbeat. Yo, what's up guys? This is me in post. I'm currently editing a video and I just realized that these breakbeats that I've been making in the video are very specific and you might be wanting to make different patterns that aren't discussed in the video. So something you can do is find some breakbeats that you think sound cool and put them in your DAW and try to see what pattern is going on here. What, what has the producer programmed or which sample has the producer used? Try to experiment with the position of the samples Put the kick where the kick is playing and the snare where the snare is playing and use these different processing and sample selection techniques to get the style of uh, breakbeat that you want. You might be in the boat of having cool sounds installed and also knowing how to program breakbeats, but whenever you make one, it doesn't feel like a true breakbeat and something cohesive. That's why we'll now get into the processing of the breakbeat. The processing really plays in with the sound selection part because the processing alters the way the drums end up sounding. For this breakbeat, the processing is actually what does everything here. This is what it sounds like with everything on, But let me turn off each individual plugin and show you what it then sounds like. It sounds a little pathetic. I first of all added a distortion to the kick sample to make it punch a bit more. Then a reverb on the snare. I like to put reverb on snares and breakbeats because it puts into this room. That's all there is for the individual processing. Now I'll move on to the bus. First, we got some multiband compression. Here you can see the lows and the highs are boosted just a bit. These are the settings I like to use when I use OTT. I like to put the time all the way up and then only use the upward compression instead of the downward. Put the depth to about 20%. That makes it go from this to this. Next, we got an RC20. I'm gonna go through each layer of processing in the RC20. The first thing is a noise. It's got a bit brighter tone here and the follow is almost all the way up. So it mostly plays when the drum plays. You can hear that texture in the back. And we got a distortion. Fairly simple. We got a bit crush. We got this magnetic effect. And lastly, we have an EQ. After the RC20, we have this knock. We're boosting the transients over here and making the high end a bit crisper. Just like we put reverb on the snare, I'm putting a reverb on the whole breakbeat as well. The last thing we're doing is soft clipping the breakbeat to make it punch even more. Bus processing is really what elevates your breakbeat, and it's what makes it sound cohesive and as one. Multiband compression like OTT, or even a glue compressor, can be really good at making your break sound like one, and clipping at the end can take away the unnecessary loud transients. Plugins like RC20, Sketch Cassette, and Tape Cassette really add that vintage and old school feel to your track, if that's what you're going for, of course. Processing can also be a lot more subtle than this. For instance, the jungle loop that we made before only has two things on it. It makes it go from this, to this. It is subtle, but you can hear that change in vibe. It goes from a bit more digital to a bit more retro sounding. Of course, we're using RC20 for this. We got a very slight bit of distortion, some big crushing, a filter which is cutting out some highs, and lastly, we're reducing the width to make it more mono. The RC20 makes it go from this to this. We also have a knock on this breakbeat. We're boosting the transients a lot, saturating a lot as well, and then adding that crisp high end to make it go from this to this. The last thing I want to dive into is chopping up your own breakbeat. The jungle breakbeat that we just talked about sounds like this. But you can also chop up your own breakbeat to mess around with different grooves. For example, I've chopped up this breakbeat to make this. All you do is just mess around with small sample chops. For example, I've done like this, and maybe copied here, over here. You can create these really strange rhythms with the break that you've already made. 
over here i think i've done like that looks like i've just copied over from from here to here like this As you can see, it's fairly simple. It's not rocket science. If you've seen my sampling video, you'll know you can do this with melodic sounds as well. In that track, I took one sample and turned it into three different tracks. So if you're interested in that, you can check it out in the top right corner. But that's all for this tutorial. I hope you learned a bit more on how to make your own breakbeats and what goes into making one. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comments down below. But nonetheless, I hope you found the video helpful. Take care, and I'll see you all next time.